Welcome back to another episode of Chalk Talk with myself, Coach Evans, and Coach DC from All 22 Films. So welcome back to, what's this, the AFC Championship version of Chalk Talk. I appreciate you for joining with me. Um, how you been doing? Yeah, man, good. Doing great, man. Just enjoying the win, number one, and also trying to prep film and get things ready for, you know, previews and trying to understand what, what the Chiefs do well mm -hmm. and what they might try to do against us. So it's been fun, man. Uh, I pretty much made up my mind today. I was like, I'm not going to sleep the next two nights because there's just so much that I want to get done. I'm sure you're in the same boat. Yeah, and that and that's one of the things I have. I got to try to make time somewhere, but I got to find a minute to do something I want to do. And that's why I kind of lose out toward the later later part of the week because I get to I get tired and I'm like, no, I'm just going to chill. <laughs> it's just to watch a basketball game or just to watch yeah. a movie or something. And, and still, even though I, when I'm watching those, I'm thinking about, what I yes, can sir. do this movie go off like what video can I make or what point can I prove out put out or something like that so even when my mind ain't on it well even when my body ain't on it my mind's still on it but exactly I, I understand completely my I wife completely. my wife will fuss at me she's like why do you always have to have a pen and a tablet next to you I said just so I can make notes you know we'll be watching Frozen for the fiftieth time <laughs> and I'll be making notes about the Ravens nickel defense and how we stop runs into the boundary so anyway fun, fun fact. I've never seen Frozen, mm. but Good for you. I, obviously my kids are, are grown. So when they came out, they were out of the cartoon phase. So <laughs> at this point, I, I'll be walking around humming or, or singing uh, kids stuff because of my children watch it so much or the, or they talk about it so much that it gets stuck in my brain. So yeah, that's how it was with Dora the Explorer and, and Swiper No Swiping and Bob the Builder and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I could I could hear the tunes and other I knew what they were watching. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Let, let's get started right here. So what we got on the film is to start off with is the Baltimore Ravens. They're kind of run defense, and uh, kind of talk to me about. And I, I saw that you put out a video yesterday about these these guys up in here, Matt mm. BK, Travis Jones, and we talked about it briefly. You know, and you know, um, in our group in our DMs that. They had a great game. So just kind yes. of tell me, elaborate what you thought about the game that the defensive line had versus the Texans. It seemed like the left guard couldn't do anything with Matabike. And it mm -hmm. seemed like, you know, that simplistically, it, you know, from a coaching standpoint, if you if you run a couple concepts at a particular player mm -hmm. and they're unsuccessful, you kind of say, okay, I'm going to move on from that. Let me, let me go somewhere else. And it seemed like every defensive tackle that was brought into the game made a play somewhere. Almost, almost one on each possession. Yeah. Pierce, the one where Pierce is is tracking Stroud down. It's not this play. Forgive me. Uh, that one was. It was like, how many guys can we bring in the game, and they all have an impact. Uh, number one, number two. Out of our nickel defense, I thought our run defense was pretty daggone good. We was we're in our right. nickel here against right. our twelve. You yep. know. And look at that. Look at Matt BK, man. <laughs> Amazing. This is like play three or four. The first play I showed you was the first play of the game. This is like play three or four. And Matt BK is our base. To, my apologies. This is our base. Yeah, yeah my apologies. Our base. This is our base. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this is our base. Uh, I was just surprised at how many times, you know, they got nothing done in the run game. And Clowney was, I mean, Clowney was super disruptive against those guys. His, I've said it all year. There's some times where I, I feel like he plays a little high sometimes, but he mm -hmm. plays with such violence and such aggression across the line of scrimmage that he's just disruptive as hell. Like I didn't even notice this the first time, but look, because I was so focused on Matter BK, but look what Clowney does to Tunsil. Yeah. Tunsil's one of the best in the business. Just yeah. show, just stand him up. Frames him up. Extension. That's perfect. Edge set. I mean, even if uh, Singletary tried to bounce it, that's perfect extension. You got his yep. right outside arm free, taking on the guy with half a man. That's that's perfect. It's just so many guys, so many guys, the interior guys and the, and and the edge players, outside linebackers that played well. I was excited to see Harrison and well, he's he's here on this mm -hmm. play. I was excited to see Harrison in there. Uh, yeah. I feel like he's played un, in an underrated fashion all year. You know, against the run on rundowns, obviously. But I, I, I went in, back to this impressed. play because this is the first time I've seen him in this position since he's been drafted. Mm -hmm. Like well, yeah, that, that year, matter of fact, that's the first time I've seen him here. Every, everything else this year has been on his edge, and then they yeah, take him out. back. They take him out um, in passing situations, but to see him play right here and to have these three. With with the front four, we get that ain't bad if we got you know if they try to come heavy yeah. like they are here, that ain't a yeah, bad for, situation. So I would say for me personally, I would say the strength was called to the field pre snap. Even though the mm -hmm. tight end is over here to our right, 
we've predetermined and called it to the field. And then he's kicked back. I'm calling him to Sam out of a four, three, mm -hmm. but I understand yeah, that we got to, you know, the way Ravens, he's right here. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So it's just an under front for me to the, to the field. Um, and then the tight end moves over. So he slides back. We used to do that with Bowser a lot. Mm -hmm. I like it. It gives you some versatility uh, against this chiefs team. Uh, you know, I don't know how often they're going to be in, well, you know what, actually they ran a little bit more 12 and 13 personnel than, then people will probably realize. Uh, yeah. I was surprised the Texans were going to so much of that. I, I expected to see 11 personnel from them. I really did. Yeah, the fact that they, in this set, a bunch, lets me know that they thought they could establish the run, maybe because of what the Rams did, and they were mm -hmm. able to do it. And the fact that we did it out of base, like this is base, and you just slide just, Hamilton down as like your extra linebacker, and you still covered. I, just, I, I was surprised at, at their usage of 12 personnel so much. And their inability to, or unwillingness, if you ask me, to do traditional run plays. I guess well, when they're not working, you know, when they're not working, you don't want to keep running, keep running it. Um, they definitely had trouble with with our guys. You know, left guard here is having trouble with Pierce. I think. Yep. Right there. Look, look at him. It's just gap control. Mm -hmm. Just gap control. And he Pierce ain't doing nothing. Like he he crosses Pierce's face. So at this he point, he him. should he should win. But the fact that Pierce just replaces him yeah. and gets that gap right there, that's that's good hand placement by and hand fighting by Pierce and just brute strength on top of we it. used to start we used to start drills from like like once you paused it, how you paused it a minute. We would start right drills from right there. Yeah, we would mm -hmm. start drills from right there. Cause then, you know, like you just said, how many times you're gonna be losing in the middle of the play and you gotta figure out a way to go ahead and win. And Pierce yep. is just look and it's clowny. I mean, those guys <laughs> those it's, guys it's super aggressive. Tackle. Yeah. The other tackle. Oh, this is the one I like. No, this is the tight oh, end. my goodness. He just shoves him. He just chokes him out. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. It's, it's so aggressive. Like, I didn't realize he was this good versus the run. He's always, yeah. in my eyes, been a, a pass rush guy. And what he's done versus the run this year is is, is amazing for me. I, felt my, I was so clearly wrong, you know, about what I thought of him. I thought he was a little undisciplined. Um, mm -hmm. I thought that, you know, he kind of – he kind of reminded me a little bit of Ngakwe, like I'm going to get up field and not really respond to blocks consistently. Right. I, and I was completely wrong. You know, right. you know, I think that's why sometimes and I've tried to dial back sometimes when I judge players on other teams, because uh, not watching the film of them consistently, you don't know the player the way we know Clowney now. And he's just superb. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to your point, I think um, Yannick was just I'm a pass rusher. You know, mm -hmm. that's it. Uh, you, yep. Pass rushes get paid, so that's what I am. He ain't really care about defending the run, which is kind of why he's been bouncing from team to team, in my opinion. Yeah, and I really like him. You know, I really like him too. I, I, but I just I wish he would play a little bit more discipline. But some of this stuff surprised me, man. They did a fake reverse on consecutive plays, right? You know, <laughs> my uh, you can feel free to let me know if you disagree. But my perception of stuff like that is I feel like that's giving in. You know, yeah. saying we're not able to get anything accomplished in a traditional manner. Uh, and so we're going to do these things that are so outside the box uh, because we recognize we can't beat you here in this in this space. I don't know, man. I mean, maybe I, maybe the Chiefs will do the same if, thing. If if you go to this type of stuff early, you grasp them for straws. Yes. That, that's yes. that's my opinion. Like and when I was an OC, like we had trick plays. <laughs> But we didn't have a lot of them. They, they weren't like a standard where we had to run trick plays. My thing is, if we got to run trick play, we can get you every now and then on trick play. But if we got to consistently run them, we in trouble. Back to back plays, a fake reverse. Yeah. You know that that I, I don't know that I've ever even seen that before anywhere. Um, and uh, if it's part of you know with the, with the row her uh, motion behind the backfield row or low motion hurry motion some people call it mm -hmm. if you're doing that every play that's fine but that's not what this is this is actually right. a reverse path and I've never seen Stroud hand the ball off behind like that to a running back so credit hey credit their offensive coordinator for recognizing they couldn't get anything done traditionally against us yeah and they were trying no to do things with, in an irregular fashion I'm sorry there's no, no fake with Nico coming back those steps are the only reason that he was able to get yards. Because the yeah. fake is the reason Roquan kind of stopped. Exactly. And that's the only reason he got yards. Other than that, Roquan yep. probably been all over, over that. And he yep. still ended up getting a tackle because they run to the football. I get it. I get it. Like, Nico Collins is a load. The week before in the playoffs, you know, 
he had a, that screen for a touchdown against mm-hmm. the Browns. He's just a load to try to tackle. So a part of me was thinking, like, why are you running two fake reverses in a row? Why don't you give the ball to him once? <laughs> like, right. I'd like to see him because it seemed – correct me if I'm wrong, I think he had six catches on 12 targets. So very like ineff- inefficient, you know, tar- catches to targets. And and those six catches were so spaced out that mm-hmm. the only catch I really remember is the big one where it was like third and 19 and they yep. got like 20 yards or something like that. But other yep. than that, they were so few and far between that. I remember more Dalton Schultz catches than I do. Absolutely. Um, Nico Collins. He had a screen at a quads. It was four by one, four receivers to the right, and they throw a screen to him and get it. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Queen and I, Queen and Van Noy timing it up so well, you know, them shifting. It looks like the, the left tackle tries to communicate something to the guard, but it's too late. That's what I thought. I thought Tonsil tried to tell the guard something, and he just didn't respond, like when, right there. Like yeah. Pointing at him, and the guard just still goes to this double. And so he got to go out. Well, I think he would have to go out thinking that the guard would come to, to Van Noy. But he didn't. Yeah. It was just simple. At this point, now you just don't miss the tackle. Yeah. It's a trickle-down effect either way, even if the guard steps to – steps to Van Noy, then theoretically the one technique inside of him is now the guy who, you know, has, has leverage, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, great, great recognition by those guys, obviously called on the field because the Texans went hurry up here. So there's nothing, there's no huddle, you know, there's no huddle. There's nothing called in the huddle. Those guys are checking this immediately. You know, I can only imagine what their, what their defensive uh, checks look like for the week at the NFL. Well, I, I bet when they go through their calls at like at the end, they checks, it sound like a, like a military unit. If they do X Y Z. They got. They they know the check. If they do this, they know the check. I bet you when they go through that and whatever their pregame, like maybe on Friday, Saturday nights. I bet that sound like like it's just in unison. They they all calling it out. But that's one of the things that McDonald said he wanted to do when he got here. Make sure yeah. everybody knew what everybody was supposed to do. So that way you can hold each other accountable. Yep, and not to bring up, you know, old stuff, but our previous defense wasn't. There wasn't this high level communication across the board from the player standpoint at all. Mm-hmm. It's just so different, you know, for us to see this. God, this is the one that Clowney <laughs> destroys the tight end and the puller. Yes. Throws it out. Stevens and Queen just run it. I mean, Queen is just clean to run. There's nothing. Mm-hmm. There's no one to get to him. Now, let me ask you this question, being a defensive mind. The way Clowney crashes this right here, shouldn't Queen just automatically fit right there, or he got to wait to see if it pops? Like a gap exchange. Yeah, it's like a gap exchange. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to be a little bit more decisive. I wouldn't be saying that. Clowney should be doing it the way he does it either, but it works. Right, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, like that, that's not sound. No, it's not what I'm thinking. It's not what I'm thinking that he would do, but it doesn't that it's so interesting that this you show this one after the one with Van Noy and Queen, because to me, this doesn't look like a quote call between mm-hmm. Queen and Clowney. This looks like Clowney just deciding to kick somebody's ass. Right. And because <laughs> there isn't yeah, Queen's still flat-footed here, and I think Clowney's on his fourth step, you yeah. know, or maybe third. So there definitely isn't this natural exchange, you know, uh, happening. And, and another thing I like about this is look at Tonsil trying to get the Roquan. Uh, he just easily slips it and just start running to the football. So fast. Easily. And, and Tonsil's a good athlete now. He's really – he didn't play in week one against us, right? Tonsil, I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. I don't. I don't think he played, but I could be wrong. Um, yeah, that, that, that's a great athlete trying to trying to get Roquan because Tonsil's like I said, one of the top five tackles. I, I would you say in the league? I mean, I, when I saw him against Miles Garrett the week before, I I thought mid second quarter, late second quarter. I thought I saw Miles, Miles Garrett like not even get off on a pass <laughs> rush, you know, and then and then Tunsil got hurt in that game and came back in. And I remember at one point thinking like it was a clear difference when Garrett was going up against Tunsil versus, you know, whoever they're back. Well, they moved Fant over to left tackle. Mm-hmm. Look, look at that. Look at Matt BK. <clears throat> Just replay, re, replays in the line of scrimmage. And so he ends up got, on the back got, door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, that's look at that leverage. He ends up on the back door, and then and then Smith can go front side. And hmm. even though this is a great play by Smith, if I'm the offensive coordinator, I'm PO'd at this guy. Yeah, exactly. Especially once once Clowney takes that out, that's that first step Clowney takes there. My eyes immediately go to go to the linebacker. It's a little it's a little surprising to me because Matabike is not a guy that gets off the ball slow. Mm-hmm. So he's not a guy that, based on that alignment with him being in a three technique, that as a tackle or even a coach, you know, preparing for the game that you'd say, Hey, we're going to leave the guard. 
we're going to leave the guard to go ahead and reach him. Now he does reach him, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that's not normally how you would expect that to be played. In this case, Matabike ends up playing the back door and yep. mm. you know, it looks like, you know what it looks going. like? It looks a little bit like those toss plays that everybody runs now mm -hmm. where the first tight end engages the edge defender and then the second tight end in motion coming across. It almost looks like they're doing the same thing with the tackle. You yeah. know, watch him where well, he takes on Clowney late, I guess. Is that the right word? Na you know, he takes mm -hmm. on after Clowney's engaged now. Yeah. But so there's they, nobody they really to go bring to the front him down to crack. So, so yeah, I agree exactly. with you. They bring him down to crack. So yeah, it looks like that same play. That you know, the Rams started running it. We tried to run it some last year, and, and mm -hmm. everybody runs it now to 12 personnel. Right. Now I did notice that, um, and maybe you noticed this too. We run the little scat play and we have like a lead blocker out for yeah. The swing guy. I've noticed other teams have started running that too. The one, yeah, call one man screen. The one that JK caught against the Bengals in the playoffs last year mm -hmm. up on the top sideline, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that play, especially when it's got complementary routes, you know, down the field that you're defending those routes, and then we can swing it out there to the running back. Normally, it's behind Ricard, right? Is that the one right. I'm talking about? Yep, that's exactly what I'm talking about. On this one right here, they try to do the little bend back play. Mm hmm. And we just we bring it, we bring everybody. Look how many people we got the line of scrimmage. I don't know if this was a call run blitz or what. Maybe it was the a corners run yeah. situation. You got both corners coming, you got Harrison coming. Roquan's kind of patting his feet. Queen a queen may have been in pass coverage, but when he saw the ball handoff, he might have fit in. But you pretty much got six guys coming. What's this? One, two, three, four, five, seven guys. Yeah, okay. We used to, to call run. it. Well, uh, I don't I don't know where I got it from. I think it was like some defense years ago, Oki Dog Pinch, like bringing both corners, bringing pinching the edge defenders, and them inside linebackers got to widen up, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because theoretically everything should spill. Is this the one where we've got a, a one to our left and Matabike is like in a four eye? Yeah, this is the one. Yep. Yeah, so Matabike is not in a three to me. He's in a four eye. He's a little I, I will consider wider. The same thing. And I think he's doing that so he can stunt in that A gap. You know, I think that's why he's doing that. Well, he uh, takes he the guard on head up, head up. Yeah. Though. So he's, you know, just a wide three, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, you know what? This is the one. I think Clowney said something to him pre-snap. Maybe I'm wrong. I think Clowney steps down and says something to him pre-snap. Let's see. Yep. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. I saw it right there. Right there. Huh. These guys seem so well-coordinated. I mean, look, it's the NFL, so we shouldn't be surprised by that. But we've watched – well, at this point, we've watched, what, is this 18 games we played this year? Um, <laughs> yes, 18 games? 18, yes. In the, in the preseason, every defense doesn't appear as well-coordinated and, and communicative as these guys are. Connected, I guess, right. maybe is a better word. And I, and I really love the fact that what, what you see pre-snap for us, you're probably – 99% you're not getting that post-snap. Yeah, you're not, yeah. And that's that's what I think. That's what I think confused CJ. Like he probably, you know, in some cases, other teams probably will fool you, you know, with with their looks. But for the Ravens, you're going to get a different look damn near every play. And he just, you know, his he just didn't process. And it's tough. It's tough to process because they ran a, they ran a coverage one time. They had everybody in the line of scrimmage, and I think everybody else played the sticks. And I paused it and trying to figure out what the coverage was. I, I think I know the one you're talking about. And I was like, I, I was what like, is this? Exactly. I, I think I remember, I, I think I looked at that one and I try to, I think I told you before, like I try to write a description for the files, the video files on my computer. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've got all my, my, um, I call it the glitch blitz, you know, the nickel blitzing off the edge of two D tackles dropping out. Mm -hmm. So I've got all of those saved under consistent names so I can find them, you know, as I wish. But that one, I think I even put like a bunch of dashes cause I have no idea what it was <laughs> as far as coverage. And, but they looked all in sync. They all because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Queen blitzed and Roquan dropped out, and yep. everybody else was kind of like just playing a spot. But I'm, every um, receiver was covered. I'm real interested in these edge defenders, like on these. Can you go back to that one? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm real interested on these edge defenders against these tightly aligned receivers and tight ends this week against the Chiefs. You can see. I think. I think Van Noy and Queen is coordinating this here. Um, based on that tight alignment by Nico Collins, because the tackle even steps out to uh, Van Noy. Van Noy. Let's see. Yeah. yeah he, he, if he just go, yeah, he should be good. I'm, I wonder what made him pause. Thinking CJ's going to keep the ball, maybe. I don't know. Well, if if he's C gap, if he's C gap contained, definitely. Well, he's not C gap because he steps in B gap. Yeah. I think I think that we've been hit so much this year with boundary side. You remember the Browns hit us with the boundary side pin pull 
uh, two or three times in a loss at home. I've wondered about some of our boundary stuff. If if our guys have, if our coaches have made adjustments, this is to the boundary here. And this is their both. This is their most effective run. And they say yeah. there didn't run the ball anymore after this. This was their longest run, and he didn't run the ball anymore after this. And the only the reason I think they got this is because Roe kind of like jumped in the wrong gap at the last minute. Like I'm jump inside right here, and then watch Singletary's jump cut to Roquan jumping inside. Yeah, Whoop. back out. He just happened Tight to run does a good job. Mm -hmm. Schultz a pretty good player, man. I was I don't know about you, but I was um I knew he was a good player, but I was a little bit surprised at this year seeing the film of him, how good he was catching the ball. And then how effective he was as a blocker, too. I think he was only a one year deal for them. Yeah, they hated him up the road in Dallas. Yeah. They hated him out there. But he can't he had a he had a successful year in my eyes with um with uh, the Texans. Played well, you know, he caught two passes against Darby that I thought was pretty much one on one situations. Mm -hmm. Out routes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I th I thank him for the drop too, though. We're going to mm -hmm. the all side right here and kind of look at these hog maulers. They they did a good job. And this is uh, this might be that ninth possession. We ran we ran the ball every mm. time once. Yeah. And most of it was outside zone. This cat right mm. here, man, he runs so hard. Yes, he does. It's a different style, but it's it's similar to as how hard Pacheco runs. It's a different style, though. He's more explosive than Pacheco. That's a good comparison. And Pacheco you know, is just like a little bit more tougher, if or powerful, more to speak, so to speak. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I like I like I like us running outside zone. I do. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I, you know, I really do. Um, you know, I don't, we've been running, you know, stretch or outside zone to the right for years. Uh, not so much to the left. I'm, I'm always interested, like, why aren't we running this more to the left? You know, if, if Ronnie Stanley is at this point, yeah, I know. Good point. <laughs> yeah, good point. I'm tracking. <laughs> uh, at least you let me finish the thought. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it has to do with him, but he's been playing better. And I get, mm -hmm. I get on this case all the time. He's been playing better. I think he had a terrible first half this game, but the second half I saw some combos and stuff he did. He, and one of the, the power plays, it might be on this drive, he, the guy tried the wrong shoulder. He yeah. took him out and pulled him off his feet. Yeah. But on, on this right here, this is this is like to the point where it's, it's like taking candy from a baby. You got the edge guy just going, he's just going to take off. And normally when guys do that, they scrape exchange. Yeah, but exactly. in this case, Denzel just kind of hovers. And so now you leave the outside left to nobody. And they're a, playing man. He's got a guard pull too. So, so he's got a guard pull. Yep. You know how many people run that? You know how many people run power read? You know, <laughs> you know at the NFL level with the quarterback. You know, opposite. I mean, I don't mean. You know, we run power read with the power being. You know, leaving that guy unblocked, but we got the the motion going to him. Mm -hmm. So so now we're running actual power read away from him. Uh, so Perryman's got the pulling guard. You know, so that's his key. That's tough. <laughs> that's his key. That's definitely his key. <laughs> and I, mean, I, I don't know if we have twins, you know, outside to, you know, our right-hand side of the screen. Probably not. We do because he fakes the throw. So, well, yeah. So to our right side, they got um, one guy does a bubble and the other guy's kind of blocking. Yeah. So when he get out here and kind of pump fake it, that's what they're doing. So there's no – Right there, it's like a bubble out there. We used to use a I'm here, I'm here call, but you can't be here – if you got twins out there. So like our nickel or strong safety, whatever you want to call it, you know, would come down and say to the inside linebacker six, in this case, I'm here, I'm here. And that means you can go on ahead. You can go with the pulling guard. You can go with the running back. But if I ain't here, you got to slow play it. Right. And, and that's, that's a lot of things that um, it's starting to trickle down in high school. If you can get guys that you can have proper meeting time, you can have uh, a bunch of calls. So I, I was about to work for a guy that didn't pan out that, a lot of he would make a base call, and a lot of times the kids on the field would change it to whatever fit the um, the uh, formation. Have to, mm -hmm. have to. I don't know how to do. I don't know how to teach it if you're not doing that. <laughs> to be yeah. honest with you, I mean, everything that I was taught was was checks on the field. One game we had uh, 58 defensive snaps. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll never forget it. And an 11th grade kid uh, made the made the call the correct call 56 times. Wow. You know, so he was he was him and the safety was checking in and out of everything because you know you got to man this was ridiculous like yeah. we're just getting downfield on people free run like 14 15 yards if not more yeah, he he was untouched for the first if i'm not mistaken 10 yards and then cook comes in later this drive and uh does the same thing keep in mind we ran the same play like four straight times yeah they changed their defense but we we ran we we changed the formation a little bit but we ran stretch to the 
offensive right, the screen left for the for four straight times. Yeah, yeah, the trips. And uh, 99, 98 taking the inside. All you did was help us out. Exactly, make the lane bigger. Mm-hmm. But but that. this reminded me. This reminded me a little bit of the Bucks game down in Tampa Bay um, last year, where the further we got into the third quarter and fourth quarter, the more our the more we were leaning on them. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I don't know if maybe depth was a problem for the Texans' defense, uh, defensive front, but they they definitely got worn out um, as the game went on. And you can see them um, like – let me go back. Like in this front right here, it's going to be different from the next one. It's going to be different. He can't stun inside. He's in a one. Right. In, in, that, in that stretch, you can't do that. Like that's your – It's <laughs> <laughs> the very next play. They didn't change their front. This yeah. is, to me, this is more like a 3-4 a even look to me. What what, yeah. what what would you guys call it? Yeah, I mean, either, either way, you got strong safety rolled up in the box twenty. Mm-hmm. So if, if it's a three four, then that guy's you know some some old school people would call it a fifty. You know, yeah. with the guy that, rolled up. That's in what the I box. was thinking. I was trying to yeah. I was trying to reference it to modern football, but in my mind, it was fifty. I refuse. I refuse. <laughs> or if I do use if I do use quote modern terminology, I will often remind people that you know there was pre existing names already for these things and, right. and give them the name. When I have knowledge, because I, you know, it's it's older people than me that that think that all the names I use are <laughs> too yep. modern. Exactly, like and like this. This is the play with Davin Cook. Like he's untouched for the first ten yards. Again, still stretched to the right, to the camera right. left. Yeah, and look, oh. I mean, they're uh, and and Anderson. I don't think Will Anderson was completely healthy. Um, you know, but he got because he he actually stepped inside mm-hmm. here. Yeah. I mean, like, just, just fail victim. <laughs> you can't say that's a soft edge. That's no edge, right? Look at look at what Kolar is doing to Christian Harris. Yeah, this this right here, and then you got Ricard on on his former teammate Carson. Mm-hmm. When you get a little, you get a wall like this, and you get these two blocks on the outside. I thought it was over. As, I thought as it was an offensive over. line coach, you, you that might make you know, you might get a little little wood. Oh, you tell, tell. I mean, I've heard offensive line coaches tell the running back, "Hey, how come you didn't score? <laughs> like, how do you not score?" Mm-hmm. You know. So that was that was like that one and the previous one. I, in my opinion, was really low awareness by the Texans defense uh, for real. Look, here we are again. So, I mean, we're running it to the right again. Mm-hmm. Now this time he wised up to, to basically what you're saying. Watch him step outside now. He but still the same play three or four times in a row. Yeah. So now by now he he got good gap control with his rankings. But then you got a good double team right here. This is one of the plays I liked on Simpson. Absolutely. He's gonna get the good double team and he's just gonna fall right off to Christian Harris when he activates. He activates probably, probably better as that backside guy there than he would be as a frontside guy. Mm-hmm. Is what you're saying. Yep. Then Ronnie with the cutoff. They luckily they just got Petrie fitting. And Petrie ain't nothing but a small linebacker anyway. Think about think about some of the games this year. Uh, I think it was the Lions game. We had one possession in the second quarter where we ran the ball to our right, seven out of eight plays. Mm-hmm. So we do this. It seems like we do this, maybe not once a game, but we go into this mode where we're going to run the ball to the right and you're going to have to stop it. In this case, like you said earlier, we ran the ball 10 times out of 11 plays on this possession, right? Yeah, exactly. One pass. It was a mm-hmm. third and six or third and seven, something like that. And this is the one negative play. Everything went, was a positive play except for this one. It's the one Went to the well play. too often. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Came back with the pass, which is this one right here. And again, my favorite concept. Everybody and their mama know I love it. Just mine snag. too. I didn't know this was <laughs> your love, favorite. This is mine love too. Snag. Love it. Especially I mean, when it's three into the boundary. I've been talking about this for, for a long time on my channel that like three into the boundary is such a pain. Mm-hmm. You know, with the, I'm counting the running back, you know. Oh, I know. Um, I know. And it puts one, it two, puts, and three for the people listening. That's what, that's yeah. what you're talking about. And if this and guy it, was over here before the one side. Before, right, right. It puts so that you always count the back as, a, as an extra guy. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Then you're all right. I think it's Petre whose feet is on like the 19. Yeah, right there. You had it for a second. I think he blitzes. And so the OLB drops. So there's just there's just no way to cover this from bringing that safety. You know, there's no way to stop us from catching the ball. Let me put it that way. Um, you know, either the flat's going to be he open to shoot route. Exactly. Impossible from that, that far depth. And this is the way I teach it to, to the kids. So if you're you're the snag guy, whoever's covering the flat, whoever's running with the back, soon as they cross your face, show your number. Sit. Yeah, exactly. No, ma- no matter well, where in your progression you at, when they cross your face, 
show your numbers. And if they Here's don't cross I, your face, just nestle up to them. Here's why I say you can't cover it like this. If you pause it when likely gets like now, or a little bit, but maybe like the 17. Yeah, right there. What if likely runs a post? <laughs> and you can't cover it. You can't. That's why you can't cover it like this. That's why three into the boundary is so difficult, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I haven't seen you know I haven't seen us do that that often because you could certainly do that right now. Yeah. But it would be it would be later in the read. You know, for Lamar, obviously he's not going to read that first. Mm -hmm. This to me, this that that post would be like if if Petrie didn't blitz and he kind of nestled up beside right. Zay, then right. you could have the option to pop 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 and then go inside. Especially if this safety was doing something else. If it, now if because he, he's not really a post safety right now, but because he's in man. But if he was back here, it'd be different. But with him trying to, you know, work in here, maybe trying to take something away from the backside, or maybe even in the box. On like when they try to do their their sticks type coverage, that post would be deadly. I don't think they covered three into the boundary like that until that play. Mm -hmm. I think that's the fourth time we have shown it to them. It, it might it might even be more. I don't think they covered it like that. So so I guess maybe for the people listening, like if they covered it like this on the first time we showed it to them, then we're gonna come back probably and throw the post later on. Because we mm -hmm. they, they vacated that space, they've shown us that they'll they're not being sound. But you know, we normally are running that snag smash, just like you saw. Yeah, it's been great and to us. The second half, I don't think I think we ran uh, some variation of snag like three or four times. Yeah. We didn't throw it much, but we ran a variation of snag, and they didn't defend it. It was how we got them out of the blitzes early in the second half when we ran a two man snag with Justice Hill in the flats and yep. a little slant route, and then we ran empty. Justice Hill went in motion mm -hmm. like he was going to motion back in the backfield. They snapped it, and he ran basically the same spot he was in. So it was snagged. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was the one Steven Nelson got hurt on. That was a nice tackle by Nelson. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this is what I think on this play. I think these two guys are the only two people that know Lamar's keeping it. Right. I, the both times we ran, I, I almost, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I think those two guys are the only people that know this is a, a um, boot. Certainly looks like it. Oh, no, it's not this one. It's the next one. My bad. I was going to say, it looks like run. <laughs> oh, because he this, was under center. He's under yeah. center. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, guys are all blocking on the front side. They're all blocking. Mm -hmm. like I think they got a little call or something that they didn't told each other because we ran it on fourth and one earlier, too. Yeah. So, I don't you know, know about the you, backside but of power, he's supposed to stab and hinge, and he stabs. But when they try to shoot yeah. the gap, he just let them go. I'm just so glad. Think about, you know, what we used to do on fourth and short or third and short. We were so right-hand dominant, mm -hmm. you know, and or, you know, we put Lamar in the shotgun run QB power. You know, we still we still could run QB count read or bash or whatever. But I'm just so glad that we have plays like we're running power to our right or left side of the screen like you just showed. Mm -hmm. Or we're booting opposite of it. There's got to be something, you know, complimentary there. Tight end drag or on the cross or, you know, people call it tight end leak, whatever. Um, it's got to be something we show this week in one of them short yarded situations. Just the one where Queen is trying to pick somebody, but the D tackle doesn't float. I think so. This is uh, one of that. This is the third down situations. So this will be their first third down situation that they did not get. Yeah, he's trying to pick the left guard. Mm -hmm. And we don't, yeah, we don't Matt, cross. Matt don't, don't come behind. Yeah, him. yeah. Queen's so good at that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's not. There's no stat for that. I don't know about you guys, but we had we did have a stat for our defensive productivity chart where we would give him points for correctly executing that technique because it frees up somebody else for the sack. But you know, right. this day nobody nobody talks about those things. But that's one of them unheralded things that I think uh, Queen does, and a lot of guys do on yeah. this defense. And he, on this defense, he he's great at it because a lot of times he'll do it and won't need to. Remember exactly. one play in particular, he came through. Let's say maybe this gap and went to go pick somebody off, but there was There's nobody, nobody there. to pick. He just <laughs> had a clear shot to the quarterback and went to go pick. But you know, and I know you experienced this. Um, you know, I'm not gonna name no names, but you see people commenting, why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? And that tells you right there the people that have been involved in the game versus those who have not, because if you have been involved in the game, you understand the concept there is a pick. You know, that's what the concept is. And this is one of the plays coverage wise where they're just kind of sitting. In a zone, like they just playing yeah. the sticks, really, and, and and all the guys are covered. Because if you see where the, the three DBs are versus their three uh, right. receivers, they they really don't pick them up. They just let them flow. They just exchange. They just kind of sit Roquan's, in the zone. They pick them up as they go. Roquan's taking the slant to the weak side to the single mm -hmm. receiver side. I think, and, and and since you're more of a defensive mind than me, the the um 
premise of Roquan dropping out here is to take away the quick slant, right? From the backside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're not we're not getting beat by that, number one. By this over here. And then and it tells the corner you don't have to play a slant on this particular play, at least. You don't have to play a slant. You can play something else. And since it's, you know, what is it, third and eight, third, third and ten? Similar like third and ten, yeah. You know, he's assuming that he's not going to get a post. <laughs> you know, he's assuming that he's not going to get um, a dig. You know, he's right. like, okay, I, I got help on a slant, uh, and I got to worry about these two routes here that they run on. Because you know how it is. They got data for what route does he run on third and ten when he's the backside X, mm -hmm. and it's never this or this. So – I'm only going to defend that and that. It's right. just super processing in the moment by those guys. And that's what makes hurry up offense such a pain, you know, for us as defensive coaches because it doesn't allow us to help in that process. And at all, it has to be done by all the players on the field. Yeah. And the thing is, with because uh, I, lo I love to run tempo, but you got to have guys that understand what you're doing and you got to be able to have mm -hmm. your whole offense in. So I had to, I had to slow it down my last time. And I it was really it really put us at a disadvantage, but I couldn't. For two reasons, I couldn't do tempo because I lost three of my receivers that they practice started that I've been working with all summer. And using the defensive guys, I couldn't wear them out. Right, exactly, exactly. I couldn't, I couldn't wear them. So we had to go slow down, and that kind of helped help the defense and kind of hurt our productivity a little bit. And well, we had a fresh quarterback too. You almost either need to have depth such that you have your dedicated 12, 13, 14 guys for offense, or you only go tempo to end of the first quarter, end of the second quarter, end of the third, when you know you're getting ready to get a break and – and be able to regain your stamina, you know, in that break. The thing I love about this is when we started early in the season, when I realized that we could get pressure with four, I knew our defense was going to be special because this oh, is just yeah. a four man rush. Seven guys dropped out. Moving he under, them up he under the rest. Do you think that, do you think that some of these, uh, let's do it this way. How many of these, can you go back to that one where we got three on one side? Yeah. So we got three. Uh, no, it should be the next one. Uh, go forward or go back. Go oh, forward, right. yeah, forward, forward. Right yeah. Should be that one right there. We got three on one side. Do you think that some of these is hard coded, meaning Clowney, we want you to get upfield, and then you know we want we want the D tackle to be the guy who loops around, not mm -hmm. until the quarterback steps up because of the outside pressure. Let it run, and and maybe once he gets to quarterback depth, it doesn't look like it. It just has happened so many times this year where. Clowney or Van Noy get upfield and the D tackle. It happened four times in this game. You know, it, so I wonder if, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where a D tackle ends up looping around and then getting to Stroud scrambling to the right. It happened four separate times with like three different guys. One time it was Broderick Washington, mm -hmm. one time it was Jones, and, one, and this time here it's Matabike, right? Third and like 21. Yep. It's Matabike, definitely. I'm I'm so impressed with their their technique and their hand fight and their mm -hmm. ability to get leverage on guys. This stuff they wasn't doing last year, and it's, and it, even though he's got the most sacks, it's not just him that's doing this stuff. You start right, you right. get to see you see it out of Travis Jones, you see it out of Urban, you see it out of the Edge guys. Uh, Chuck has really took their game to another level. Yeah, hi, I hire him. Uh, you know, however you can keep him, <laughs> keep him. Um, look, at this, look at this hand swipe by by Matt BK. Look, this is some karate move on early Saturday morning stuff. He's on the downside, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think that I do think that the Texans, and I actually said this in a preview before the game, they're very right hand dominant as far mm -hmm. as their pass game. Against the Browns, um, somebody showed me a graphic, you know, those next gen stats that show uh -huh. where they threw the ball. And I was I was a little surprised by it because I felt like there were so many throws to the right against the Browns. And there were so many times in this game against us where Stroud's trying to move out to the right. Granny's he's a right-handed quarterback, but it seemed like an inordinate amount of times. I felt like our rushes was upfield from the right. Then again, as I say that, here comes one on our on our on their left. Mm -hmm. Who was that win? Is that Oway? Yeah, it's Oway. Yeah, it's Oway up there against Tunsil, right? Yeah. Yep. He kind of slips, doesn't he? If he don't slip, that's a sack for him. Yeah, he beat him three times last all. If you don't, know, and again, even though he hasn't had a, a some gaudy numbers, he looks like a totally different player. Yeah, it's completely different. Totally different player. And again, you're getting rushed with four. Got Too him off right. the spot with four, and you got seven guys in coverage. What I love yeah. about this is, watch it. This is the play that I said I'll, I'll be confused on. This is it right here. Yeah. You drop back at this point right here. What are they playing? Because it looks like Queen and this guy's in man. Looks like Stevens and this guy in man. They all leads down here in zone. It, what was it? A three by one? Uh go back. Let me go back. Let me see. It's three by yeah, one. Probably, yeah. Yeah, it probably is. Just man on the backside and some zone on the front. That looks like two on the front because mm -hmm. Darby's sitting in the flats. 
<clears throat> I was thinking it was some version too because of because of Marcus too. Yeah. So <laughs> it's too. It, <laughs> I hate this it, two man, but not the traditional two man. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Two slash man. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, not two dash. I, I'll be honest with you. I, for me personally, when I, it's, I'm not as surprised by it because I'm gonna be honest with you. Versus trips, probably eighty percent. We were zoned to the trips and man mm-hmm. to the backside. Yeah, and I, was I just feel like say that. I worked for a dude that in this same formation, and if they came out in this. This this guy would be they'd be man man to man. Yeah, Louis. His eyes would work for number three coming across. Louis. Yep. And yep. we were, we were, you know, to be honest with you, I th- I feel like the Ravens doing this kind of predetermines for the offense in a good way. Meaning, if you want to go on ahead and take that man over here to the backside, go on ahead and take that. Mm-hmm. We're going to defend it, and you're going to lose some of those matchups. But you're not going to manipulate us or beat us with some zone beater over here to the trip side. Does that make sense? Yep, makes a ton of sense. Did, tell me if you notice. Know, watch how uh, Roquan passes this this uh, this vertical off to Marcus back here. Is it three? Uh, right here in the middle. Watch yeah, how so, Roquan so, yeah. pass it off. He just passes it, it off, pass it off to him, turn to make sure he got it, and just go find somebody else. So, like, I don't know how technical or how much, you know, your listeners or commenters get, but, like, it could be – he's three now, like, where you have it paused. He's three mm-hmm. now. He's the – he because he's, you know, the third guy from the sideline. I'm not talking for you. I'm talking, obviously, for the people listening. But uh-huh. from the, from alignment, pre-snap, the formation, he might not have been three. You know, three uh, – uh, yeah, he well, he is three now. He, mm-hmm. he is three. But he could be – it could motion down, and he could be two at the snap, but three post-snap like he is right. here. So he's and still you definitely have to change it for the for people that's listening. If if any of the, like if he come in motion, he turns into number three. He, if the yeah. ball snapped and he instantly like go up under. Now he becomes number three. He comes so three. Yeah. Within the first few yards, wherever his position is, that's where his number is is allocated. And you, you know you got to show all the you got to show the kids that you got to show the kids all the variations and don't go with that eye candy. You know, and it becomes tough. And for these guys, it ain't tough. They they make it look second nature. <laughs> right. And the thing with, with 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 high schoolers, you got to worry about what they've been through that day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What their girlfriend said to them or what some dude said to their girlfriend at lunch. <laughs> exactly. Another three by one, mm-hmm. you know, and it certainly looks like man over there to the downside. It probably looks like – and then you get into all this fun stuff that McDonald does where we're playing man on one to the trips, but then we're mm-hmm. matching two and three with the safety nickel and the other – you know, in the linebacker. So, like, exactly. it makes it tough. This is Kyle Hamilton on the out, right? He, uh, yeah, Kyle. He, they didn't even run a route to the sticks. So, this mm-hmm. was almost like a give up play to me. And this is the closest they even got to the red zone right here. This play right here is the closest they got to the red zone. That's right. All game. I think we're, I think we're in for a, uh, a different level. And this is no disrespect to the Texans at all, which, you know, probably gets some pushback from people. I think we're in for a different level threat. Mm-hmm. from the offense that we're going to see this week, even though, you know, the Chiefs are, quote, not having as as explosive a year as they have in previous years in terms of touchdowns. I think Mahomes is like 28 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, so statistically down year. But we're in for a different – they're not going to be, like you called it, they're not going to have give-up plays. Right. <laughs> you know, their plays are going to be designed to gain the yards necessary to keep the drive yeah, going exactly. and get a touchdown. There's no, I don't think there's going to be any give-up at all, certainly not in defense. And all plays, and the thing is with with uh, CJ. Now, even though CJ is athletic, when once he get flustered out the pocket, he ain't really much trying to do too much. At yeah. this point, Pat, Pat gonna get out here and make something happen. So it's gonna be yeah. imperative that these guys stick, stick or reverse stick, or reverse stick. field to make something happen. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the thing that's you, know, you watch it happen, and it's like a nightmare because you you imagine. I, I know for us, you know, as soon as that happens offensively, our, our offense corner is going to go hurry up because he wants yep. to keep your same D line on the field because they're dealing with the frustration of being not able to sack that guy. Mm-hmm. On Conversely, on the other side for defense, as soon as that happens to my guys, I'm getting two of my D linemen off right now. So getting two other fresh guys in there that didn't just miss on, you know, Mahomes. It's going to be – it's a totally different threat. Yeah. Now, the good thing about that is when you, when we sub any of these four guys, the drop-off oh. is, is little to none. Yeah, that's right. All capable. Yep. Yeah. It's little to none. And they're all pissed off to just get on the field. Mm-hmm. Bad angle by my left. <laughs> this is the, the last one. But I, I what I do like about this one is the fact that he timed this up. Like, because, you know, quarterbacks oh, go through and they look. They, they scan the field trying to see, you know, what's going on to get their pre-snap reads. And he waits till all that happens. 
perfect timing. I just love his body yeah. positioning here too. Before no giveaway, you know, right. before he moves. Like at this point, CJ's not going to look back over there. He never even sees him coming until the last minute. And what I, I do like about this, and I explained this in a video that, and this is where I had an issue with uh, some defensive coordinators too. These two guys, they come touch the guys they're supposed to block. And as an old lineman, you got to account for them. How can you That's not right. account for guys right in your face? Have then to. they drop out. Then they drop Have out. To. And so now you got three versus two on the other side. That's how Marlette is, com is coming free. Yep. So um, – I'm trying to think of who did it a couple weeks ago in the wild card round. It was it was all it was a check. You could tell they checked into it because it was a compressed alignment. Um, you know those guys they checked into the blitz as soon as the receiver motioned down and became compressed. It's a pretty compressed alignment there. Well, not 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 so much. The, the receiver up top is wider. Yeah, they, these are stacked for the most part, but they they probably are traditional, especially being in the boundary. Yeah, I like I just like when we do this and all the Mike McDonald stuff. I. <laughs> You know, it's just it's just shocking the ver wide variety of things our guys execute versus, you know, two years ago before he got here, how simplistic our coverages were. We mm -hmm. weren't we weren't multiple number one, and we number two we weren't efficient while being multiple. Now we're we, both. We weren't DB friendly either. Not at all. You you would have had to have you would have to be a dog to to uh, excel in wing system. You got to be. Uh, Pat Peterson, or you got to be Jalen Ramsey to excel next. Right. You playing man all the time. Yep. The system we the system we running now is you can have a runner Darby out there, and there's no shade to runner Darby. Brandon mm -hmm. Stevens can have his best the best season of his career. Yep. And, Recognition. and when, like, when Marlowe come down, you can you can I ain't gonna say you protecting the DBs, but it's easier on them to play yeah. effective. It's a more sound system. Just say mm -hmm. it. It's a more sound system. It's more, <laughs> it's more balanced. And and you know, you know, from being high school coaches, we get it. You want your system to be something that the widest range of, of players can access, so exactly. that you, so that if your starter goes to, does go down, your backup can play. Number one, number two, so that you get more kids on the team. You know, this mm -hmm. is pro football, but there's still an element of 17 game season is a long ass season. And I got to make it to where my third DB or my fourth one. Look, when we played the Dolphins, correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon Stevens, nor Marlon Humphrey, nor Kyle Hamilton played in that game, if our memory serves. Um, the one to clinch? I know Kyle didn't play. I don't think Marlon played. Marlon played until he got hurt against the, on the extra point. But, okay. but I don't think Stevens played, right? I don't know. I don't know. I know we were down some DBs and still did what we did to them. I, I, yeah. I get the point. I, I get the point. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. The it, system it is, makes it is, friendly. Oh yeah, because Rocky Sam played a lot that game. You sure? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, the system's created such that the DBs can still be effective, and we're not giving up big plays. You know, against the Chiefs, they've got the ability to execute 10, 12, 14 play drives. They're going to have to. Mm -hmm. Mike's going to make them. Like the thing is, as long as we don't give up big scores to them, and I'll leave it right there. We can kind of wrap this up. As long as we don't yeah, give man. up big scores to them. Uh, I think we should be fine. Make them drive the ball. and Because it's hard to drive the ball. From an offensive guy, to go 12, 13, 14 plays consistently during a game, that's tough to do. Tips, passes, uh, you know, guy, second guy in on a receiver, forcing a fumble. You know, the more plays that I think conceptually, you know, the more plays we make them have to execute against multiple coverages, mm -hmm. I think that's what Mike McDonald's system is. And, and really, it's probably a poor thing description to say Mike McDonald's system because other dudes on that staff are having an impact right. you know we don't we don't know all their names or we don't talk about them a whole lot mm -hmm. but um it's just a it's just a great group on defense players wise and a great group of defensive coaches and and you know we're in we're in for a handful but I love how Lamar said it this week may have been today you know to be a champion you got to beat a champion and mm -hmm. I'm glad we got the Chiefs I, yeah. people in my discord didn't like it I said man I want Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes and I want to beat them and then we go on to the Super Bowl. Exactly. To be the champ, you got to beat the champ. If I'm not mistaken, that might be a, a Ric Flair old uh old <laughs> yes, sir. To, from wrestling. To be the, from WWE to be the man, you gotta beat the man. Yep. <laughs> yep. So um, you know, for the people that don't know, and I'm sure most people know, but let the people know where they can find your your um your analysis, your film analysis. A YouTube, all 22 films, and Twitter, you know, whatever my handle is, just, just search all 22 films. <laughs> right. But I don't I, know. I probably you, retweeted some of it. So uh you, yeah. you can go on my channel or my page and find it and go. I can't. There. I can't handle more than two platforms at this point. Like, you know, the whole Patreon thing, I'm on Patreon, but it, it's tough to post 
you know, additional stuff on there, just, mm-hmm. just, t- just time being able to dedicate to it. So I appreciate you making time for me to come on here. It's fun, man. No we're going no to do it two more, two more times, right? Most definitely. Most definitely. We're going to get this, this game and then we can get Super Bowl and we can be ready to roll, ready to roll. <laughs> All right, I man. appreciate it, man. I thank you for uh, joining me again. And uh, hopefully we'll be back here this same time uh, next week, man. So peace and love to everybody out there. Uh, this is coach Evans with Tally Films. This is coach DC with all 22 films and um, we'll see y'all soon. Peace and love.